What if trees not only produce oxygen, but would also generate electricity? Imagine, your smartphone being charged by a tree in your garden. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, after you've seen this video, not anymore. Because in this video, I'm going to show you how I made a tree generate electricity. And you might be wondering, how on earth can a tree generate usable electricity? Or could it really be a feasible and practical method of generating energy? Because I know it sounds far-fetched, energy generating trees. But think about it. Trees are constantly moving in the wind, even on a calm day. This movement is a form of kinetic energy, and kinetic energy can be converted into electrical energy. We would essentially be using the same principle applied in wind turbines, but in a different way and on a smaller scale, for now. So, as the branches in the trunk of the tree move in the wind, we should be able to convert that movement into electricity. But before we get to that, it's important to know in what ways trees move. Because we can basically divide the movement of a tree into four different groups. We have the trembling of the leaves and the twisting of the trunk, for example. But both of those movements are pretty much useless for what we're trying to achieve. Luckily, there are still two other movements that are more suitable for the job. And one of them is probably the most visible movement of the two, which is the bending of the trunk. When the wind pushes against the tree, the trunk bends. This happens especially with tall, slender and flexible trees. And then there's another more subtle movement, the swaying and bending of the branches in the wind. Both forms of movement are types of kinetic energy. So we should be able to harness that energy, at least if we can figure out a way to get a grip on those movements. Because how do you convert the movement of a branch or a trunk into usable electricity? Well, the first and simplest way I could think of would be to just tie a rope to the tip of a branch and use the movement of the rope just above the ground to drive some sort of generator. But not only would that look rather messy, surely there's a better way to do it. Now, if we want to give this any chance of success in the real world, I think we need to come up with a system that can be centralized and as much as possible kept out of sight. So one thing we can do is run the rope along the branch to the center so that we can at least bring everything together around the trunk. But still, how do we then convert the movement of the end of the rope into usable electricity? That's where the concept of a linear generator comes in. A linear generator works by converting motion into electricity using magnets and coils. Just like the more commonly used radial generators. The core of this linear generator consists of 10 pairs of neodymium magnets and are placed in an alternating north-south polarity. One pair of magnets is 10 mm wide and I put a 12 mm spacer between each pair. The coils surrounding the magnets are also 10 mm wide and have a 12 mm gap between them. Now, to get the highest efficiency, it's important that the coils are wound as tightly as possible. And since I had to wind 10 coils with around 400 turns each, I decided to make it a little bit easier for myself and made a small automatic winding setup, which automatically rotates and keeps track of the number of turns per coil for me. Because if I had to do that manually, I know exactly how it would go. What makes this system powerful is that all the coils work perfectly in sync, allowing the generated energy to be combined. Each coil has individual connections, giving us the flexibility to connect the coils in different ways. For example, parallel for more current and lower voltage, in series for higher voltage and lower current, or in pairs for a balance between it. For now, I connected all the coils in series. By attaching the core of the generator to the end of the rope and the outer housing with the coils to the tree, the magnets will be pulled up through the coils as the branch moves in the wind. And due to gravity, they drop back down as the branch returns to its original position. This creates an alternating magnetic field inside the coils, which, according to the laws of electromagnetic induction, generates an electric current. And the faster that movement, the more electricity is generated. Now that you have a clear picture of the concept, we can look at how we can optimize this system. But before we do that, let's start by making a bracket, so that we can easily attach the generator to the tree. Because screwing the generator directly to the tree probably won't be considered a good idea by many people.
Okay, now that that's done, let's look at which movement of the branch are currently being converted into linear motion via the rope. Because I think there's still a lot to be gained at that point. As it stands now, only the up and down movement of the branch is usable. Because if we move the branch from left to right, almost nothing happens as you can see. To solve this, we could choose to attach not one, but two ropes from the tip of the branch towards the trunk. If we then ensure that the hinge points of the two ropes are not only located below the hinge points of the branch, but are also sufficiently horizontally spread, this should, in theory, ensure that all movements of the branch are equally converted into linear motion. And that seems to work quite well, as you can see. But this movement is still quite slow. And since faster movement results in more energy being generated, as you might remember, it would be nice if we could speed things up a bit. And I think I have the perfect idea for how to do that. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay.com the go-to place for high-quality PCBs and manufacturing. Whether you're working on a DIY project or a professional build, PCBWay.com offers reliable, affordable and fast services. Find out how they drive innovation by providing high-quality manufacturing solutions for projects like this and many others, including yours, at PCBWay.com and bring your ideas to life today. Okay, so both ropes are wound around this pulley. When the branch moves to the left, the length of the left rope shortens and the length of the right rope lengthens, causing the pulley to start rotating, counterclockwise in this case. And if the branch moves in the opposite direction, the pulley starts to rotate clockwise. Now to speed things up, we can attach a large gear to the pulley. This large gear then drives a smaller gear, which, if we add a few extra parts, then converts the rotating motion into a linear motion for our generator. Due to the 4 to 1 gear ratio, the small gear rotates 4 times for every time the large gear rotates once. As a result, the generator makes 4 times more strokes with the same movement of the branch. But this gear ratio also has a big downside, because although the number of strokes of our generator is quadrupled, it now takes 4 times as much force to get it moving. And the downward stroke isn't much of a problem, because the weight of the magnets combined with gravity takes care of that. It's the upward stroke that requires the most force because it involves lifting the entire weight of the generator core. To prevent this, we could of course use something like a spring to ensure that both the up and downward stroke require about the same amount of force. But I might have something better, because I still have a few of the same ring magnets left that I also used for the core. And if we place those with the same poles facing each other under the generator core so they repel each other, perfect right? The beauty of a system like this is that it happens in a natural and almost invisible way. The tree just lives its life while we quietly convert its movements into electricity. But so far, it's still just a proof of concept. And the most important thing we want to know is how feasible can a system like this actually be? And to find the answer to that question, that's where you come in. Because what I've noticed since I started this channel is that many of you come up with ideas that are much better than my own ideas were when I was building the project. So for this project I thought, let's try the other way around. I'll present my ID first, so that you can share your IDs, and then we can combine the best of them to really achieve the highest possible result. So see this as a part one of two of this project. As I said, so far, this is still just a proof of concept, and for now, it's all based on a plastic tree. To find out if this is something that can be applied in the real world, it's important to collect data on different weather conditions and tree types, 
to see how consistently the system works and how efficient it really is or can be. That's why I'm going to make a larger scale version that is custom made for a single tree, which can test this system over a longer period of time. And it would be a shame if after 6, 8 or 10 weeks of testing, I upload my results and you come up with ideas that make the testing essentially pointless, because with those new ideas, the result would or could be much better. And even though this idea is still far from a solution to our global energy problems, it hopefully shows that how a little out of the box thinking and physics can go hand in hand to create something new and exciting. I hope this experiment inspires you to also look differently at the world around us and the possibilities that exist. Who knows what other ways we can find to harness nature for our energy needs. This project is just getting started and your input could make all the difference. Can we create something groundbreaking together? Or do you think this is all just a waste of time? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this concept in the comments down below.